But now he's facing another new lawsuit on the student loans uh, repayment pause. That's been in place uh, since March of 2020, so it's been sure. in place for three full years. Uh, if you have student loans, you have not had to pay federal student loans. You've not have had to pay uh, any money if you didn't want to. Those loans have not accrued interest uh, mm -hmm. again any point in the last three years. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by White House reporter Hasten Willis. Hasten, President Biden has a new front in his battle over student loan debt forgiveness. What's going on? Why is there another legal headache that is preventing him maybe from accomplishing this campaign promise of his? Yeah, he's had a lot of uh, legal headaches, to say the least, over uh, student loans. He had several uh, when he announced last August uh, the student loans cancellation program, which would be uh, about $400 billion, uh, $10,000 for most borrowers, up to $20,000 for some borrowers. Um, that's not before the Supreme Court. They've heard arguments on that, actually went to the Supreme Court and, and heard those in person. They'll rule on that in June. Uh, but now he's facing another new lawsuit on the student loans uh, repayment pause. That's been in place uh, since March of 2020, so it's sure. been in place for three full years. Uh, if you have student loans, you have not had to pay federal student loans. You've not have had to pay uh, any money if you didn't want to. Those loans have not accrued interest, uh, mm -hmm. again, any point in the last three years. Um, Biden has extended that again all, all the way until the end of this summer. Uh, before it would finally expire. He's been sued by uh, a bank out of California uh, called SoFi Bank, uh, arguing that the uh, latest extension was illegal. And mm -hmm. what they're saying is the last extension, they really dropped the uh, pandemic as a pretense for this at this point. Right. They said uh, because of this litigation over the cancellation, they're going to extend the pause because borrowers are facing uncertainty. Uh, this bank, uh, the bank refinances student loans, so they're saying that they're being hurt financially by this. Sure. And what they said is that uh, basically that's illegal. You use the Heroes Act, two thousand three, to um, justify doing this. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that uh, when it's actually about borrowers facing uncertainty. So that's what the lawsuit is about: is trying to end the student loans repayment pause, uh, and cancellation may be struck down as well. So President Biden has released his version of the federal budget, his federal budget proposal for the new fiscal year. It is likely dead on arrival given that Republicans control the House and constitutionally the House is where spending bills and tax bills originate, but it sets up a major fight between Biden and House Republicans. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, fight is the right word to use. This is one of several rounds of sparring that he's going to be going back and forth with, with Republicans, uh, especially on the House side, um, over the debt ceiling. Um, they uh, He released his budget to, uh, today, as you said. Um, and again, that's not really going to pass. It's more of like a messaging exercise with the things he wants. He's talking about raising taxes, but he right. says it's only on people who are making uh, above $400,000 a year. He wants to uh, increase spending in some areas. Uh, Republicans, on the other hand, they're, they're big on keeping taxes low and wanting to cut things. Uh, those are the things sure. that, that they're wanting to say. But they're going back and forth uh, about what they want. What Biden is challenging now, Republicans to do is to release their own budget. He's saying, I'll meet mm -hmm. with you again once you have your own budget. Uh, but Republicans have not, have not done that yet. So obviously there's a 2024 element of this because you know, they're, they're each going to make their arguments for why their handling of fiscal policy is superior as voters get ready to decide who controls Congress and the White House next year. But there's also a real world deadline sort of with the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling you know, has to be raised or there will be some economic consequences, no? Yeah, major economic consequences. The interesting thing about the debt ceiling is it's really actually uh, about money that's already been approved and spent. Uh, right. This is kind of like the bill coming due for money that was spent before. Even so, it becomes a big uh, political fight. There were big fights over the debt ceiling 10 years ago with the Tea Party and things like that. This is mm -hmm. another one of those. Uh, but what you're alluding to here is if the debt ceiling was not in fact raised by the end of the summer, which is when the, uh, the deadline is, uh, there will be basically a uh, default on the debt, which will cause a big, uh, huge, huge economic repercussions certainly would cause a recession and things like that. So the, sure. the stakes really are huge uh, in this fight. They'll eventually have to come to some sort of agreement over this, uh, but right now they're, they're both kind of posturing both sides, trying to get what, what they want out of the deal. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Biden is going to need a certain amount of unity among Democrats to really hold the line on the debt ceiling. I mean, he wants a clean debt ceiling increase. Right. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans would like to see some spending cuts or reforms, not really s specified exactly, but at least some kind of spending concessions made mm -hmm. in exchange for raising the debt ceiling. But there have been some instances recently, and I think most recently with the D.C. crime law, where House Democrats 
and maybe to a lesser degree Senate Democrats in the White House didn't seem to be totally on the same page. Yeah, Biden uh, had uh, another headache on his hands with, with that, which is the uh, yeah, the D.C. crime bill. Um, he's really had problems kind of keeping Democrats on the same page since being in office. Uh, Democrat uh, can mean a lot of things, right? Although right. on the left you have people like AOC or like Ilhan Omar, mm -hmm. and on the right or the center you have someone like Joe Manchin. There's a pretty big b bit of space there. They had really narrow ha House and uh, Senate majorities in the last Congress, uh, narrow Senate majority now. They're actually in the minority in the House now. So you've, you've got uh, not a lot of people that you have to kind of get together to, to get things to happen. Uh, but yeah, this deal with the D.C. crime bill, uh, the D.C. Council unanimously passed an overhaul of its cri crime uh, criminal statutes uh, that lowered the penalties for certain offenses, including pretty serious things like murder, uh, carjackings, uh, sexual assaults, and things like that. Uh, but the council wanted to lower some of the penalties on that. They were vetoed by the D.C. mayor, overrode her veto, and then we kind of had the opposite situation in Congress. Uh, the Republicans in the House sure. uh, were going to overturn that, and then Biden initially said he was going to veto what that was going to do, which would be allowing it to go uh, into law. Uh, but he, he uh, said that the House passed it, 173 Democrats voted against it, and then when the Senate was about to vote on it, Biden changed his mind and said he actually would go through with this and sign it if it passed it. So those 173 House Democrats uh, felt like they were kind of left out in the cold, basically. Biden told them one thing, they voted according to that, and then he changed his mind, leaving them kind of exposed. So a major selling point for Biden was his 36 years of experience in the Senate, making him a pretty good legislative deal maker, no? Well, yeah, yeah, uh, that, that was one of the selling points for Biden uh, coming into office. But yeah, he's, he's had a, a tough time of it keeping his, uh, his people in office. In fact, uh, a good example is uh, what started out as a big uh, Build Back Better Act. Right. Um, kind of went back and forth. Joe Manchin kind of kept killing that. Uh, eventually, though, they did pass a version of that, which is rebranded as the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, but when that was actually announced, it was during the middle of a White House press briefing. Uh, the White House did not even know about it. And uh, Joe Manchin was later asked about it and said that the White House wasn't involved in those negotiations. And he said uh, that if they were, that things could have gone absolutely sideways. I mean, really mm -hmm. saying that Biden wasn't involved in that was a good thing. So he's definitely had his fair share of headaches of the D.C. crime bill being the latest example of that. So. If he can, do we think he can keep everybody together, or is it still really an open question? <laughs> together on, in what sense, or on what? Well, the next big fight being debt ceiling. Do you think Democrats, because this this may be an advantageous issue for them in a fight with Republicans, maybe Biden will have better luck than he did on the D.C. crime bill? Yeah, yeah, I think on something like that. Uh, I mean, of course, we'll see what the, what the future holds. But yeah, when they have. Um, the Republicans as a, as a common enemy, perhaps, that'll help them uh, stay on the same page. When they channel Lionel Richie and we're dancing on the ceiling. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Haston. You can read Haston and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.